Let's go ahead and unbox the beefy, huge Series X. What's going on today, YouTube? How you guys doing? Hope you're being safe out there in these strange times. Now, before we go ahead and talk about the Series X, which believe me, I'm just dying to do right now, and I know you are too, let's go ahead and talk about the first Xbox and the specs, give you guys a little bit of a history lesson on all the Xboxes, and to show you guys exactly how Microsoft got where they are today. Let's do it. All right, guys, here's where it started for Microsoft. And if you've never taken one of these bad boys apart, it looks like a PC inside, legitimately. Hard drive, IDE cable, CD-ROM drive at the top, motherboard at the bottom, all kinds of fans, NVIDIA card, and a Pentium 3 processor. It literally inside now looks and feels like a computer or a gaming PC. Nothing really similar to consoles, except the size, even though it's a lot heavier and slightly larger than a PS2, and just leaps and bounds beyond the GameCube. The original Xbox had a custom 733 MHz Intel Pentium 3 copper mine based processor. Yikes, that does seem kind of slow, but then again, at the time, it was pretty fantastic. 64 megabytes of DDRSD RAM at 200 megahertz. Storage was an eight to 10 gigabyte with an eight megabyte memory card. The graphics are an NVIDIA GeForce 3 based NV2A GPU at 233 megahertz. When you really think about that, this is archaic at best. The best selling game was Halo 2, 8.46 million copies as of 2008. This console's lifespan was eight years from 2001 to 2009, and they sold over 24 million units as of May of 2006. And then of course, moving along to the Xbox 360, there were three versions of this, one that came out in 2005, another one that came out in 2010, which is the S model here, considered the slim. And then of course, there was the 360E, which came out in 2013 with hard drives ranging all the way from 20 gigabytes to 500 gigabytes, depending on the version that you had. I do have a white 360, although it's not very clean and slightly damaged. So I just figured I would show my 360S. The architecture of the 360S is far more advanced than the original Xbox. The 360S and up had the PowerPC 3.2 gigahertz tri-core Xenon processor, which is an Intel server-based processor. The PowerPC was just reduced instruction architecture designed by AIM or AIM. We're not gonna talk about that today, but a very, very advanced setup for a console. The memory inside the Xbox 360 was 512 megabytes of unified GDDR3 RAM clocked at 700 megahertz. 10 megabytes of EDRAM cache on the Xenos GPU. Moving along to the video and graphics display, it's a 500 megahertz ATI slash AMD Xenos processor, which was custom made for Microsoft, but was right about on the ballpark of an X1900 Radeon, which is a very good GPU at the time. And the Xbox 360, in my opinion, was a little bit better than the PS3 at the time, just because of the fact that it had the Xenon tri-core processor, as well well as the ATI and AMD Xenos GPU at 500 megahertz. Now, like I said, that was basically an X1900 GPU, which at the time was a very powerful GPU. And it worked out nicely for Microsoft because the 360 was a lot more successful than the original Xbox. And it took the fight to Sony, although they were outsold quite a bit. It's really hard to take on Sony when it comes to gross sales due to the longevity of the systems and how long Sony has been around. But Microsoft was able to sell 84 million units, up 60 plus million over the original Xbox, which is insane to think about because the PlayStation 4 sold over 105 million units worldwide. So it's not too far behind the PS4. Xbox 360 outsold PS3 for quite some time before the PS3 caught up. In fact, I think it was near the end of the generation 
before it happened, like somewhere around 2011 or 12. The 360 was very successful. Now it is time to talk about the Xbox One and all of its glory. Much more powered than the 360S or 360E. It comes with a custom 1.75 gigahertz AMD 8-core APU. It also has 8 gigabytes of DDR3, 5 gigabyte available to games. The hard drive originally was a 500 gigabyte, but you could upgrade your hard drive externally. The display was 720p and 1080p respectively, and the graphics card was an 853 megahertz AMD Radeon GCN architecture built into the APU. I guess you could say sort of in a way similar to today that the GPU and CPU were working together. This is the largest Xbox besides the original. When you really think about it, the Xbox One S and X were heavier and smaller, but the original Xbox and the Xbox One were about the same size, although the original Xbox was a little heavier. The new Series X is about the size of the 360S, just a little bit more square and not as wide, but it's just weird how they kind of play out side by side. Moving along to the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X, the S is relatively the same speed as the original Xbox. Although the S displayed 1440p and Ultra HD 4K just like the One X. The GPU inside the One X was a 1.172 GHz AMD Radeon GCN architecture built into the APU. Unlike the Xbox One and One S, the Xbox One X does not have a 1.75 GHz AMD 8-core APU or the two quad-core Jaguar modules. It has a custom 2.3 GHz AMD 8-core APU, two quad-core evolved Jaguar modules. So it's a lot faster, a lot better than the original Xbox and definitely a lot faster than the Xbox One S. The Xbox One X is up from 8 gigabytes of DDR3 to 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, and instead of 5 gigabytes available to games on both of these consoles, the Xbox One X had 9 gigabytes available to games. So more memory, more graphical power, as well as CPU. And as you guys can see, the Xbox One X not only outpaces the original Xbox One, but also the Xbox One S, making it the most powerful Xbox to date until the Xbox Series X came out. It's really a nice little history here, looking at where they started and where they came from. Well, now let's go ahead and talk about the Xbox Series X. I want to explain to you guys exactly what's going on inside this console because it's not a typical console. In fact, it's right up there with the top-end gaming PCs of about one to two years ago. It's the AMD Zen 2 8-core processor, which is pretty much the Ryzen 3700, which is a great CPU for gaming. Now it's time to take a look at the GPU inside the Microsoft Series X, and it is a killer GPU. In fact, it's based on the big Big Navi RDNA 2 architecture, which is blazing fast compared to previous consoles. Now, the Big Navi RDNA 2 graphics card inside Series X has 52 compute units. Well, actually, it's 56. However, four have been disabled to increase production yield on the console, but it's clocked at 1825 megahertz versus 1400 megahertz core clock of the Radeon 7 Vega based GPU. Not to mention, the GDDR6 is a lot faster than the GDDR5 HBM2 memory found in the Radeon 7. So we know that it's a lot faster than the Radeon 7. The 5700 XT video card, which is the card that a lot of people try to compare the Series X to, is nowhere near the speed of what's actually inside the Series X, considering it only has 40 compute units, 1605 megahertz core clock, and only eight gigabytes of GDDR6. So this card is not really on par at all with the one found in the Series X. Realistically, the 6700 XT, which is a Navi 22, only has 40 compute units and 12 gigabytes of video memory, which means it's really not going to be on par with the one that's in the Series X. The Navi 21, which is the 6800 XT, has the 16 gigabytes of video memory as well as 60 compute units. So we can say that the GPU inside the Series X is going to be somewhere between a 6700 XT and a 6800 XT, which puts it right there with a 2080 Super or a 2080 Ti, depending on the games, just add in ray tracing. It's going to be between a 6700 XT and a 6800 XT, but more or less the latter based on memory bandwidth and speed. It almost completely slipped my mind. Here I am getting all excited to open up and unbox the Series X that I forgot to tell you guys, 10 gigabytes out of the 16 gigabytes of video memory 
on the Series X has a bandwidth of 560 gigabytes a second, which is insane. The remaining six gigabytes have a 336 gigabyte per second bandwidth, but it's tied up with the console's asymmetrical memory performance, which is something that really no PC can do. It's pretty crazy when you think about it. If you guys don't know, 560 gigabytes a second memory bandwidth is insane. All right, guys, let's go ahead and unbox the beefy, huge Series X. It's a lot better than the PS5 box because it shows the architecture and the internals of the Series X, which I think is really cool. I just love how the Series X opens up in comparison to the PS5. It's a lot lighter, it's smaller, and it's easier. Instead of pulling it out the top and trying to get it out, you can look at that video right there on the top of the screen. It was a struggle to get the PS5 out. Series X just opens like so. And there's the console. Like I said, guys, it's a lot smaller than the PS5. So here is the Series X. It's really not that big, but it is quite heavy. I love the green. Can you guys see that? It's just kind of like hidden inside the exhaust vents. It's crazy. It's like the perfect touch. So here we go. The Series X right there, guys. Or it can sit just like this. It's really not big compared to the other Xbox consoles. Oh, that green looks killer. It really does look killer, guys. That green looks so good. I would say setting up the console vertically is a lot better considering heat rises. The air is gonna start at the bottom and it's gonna work its way to the top. It means it's gonna flow better. You can set it up horizontally, but vertical makes a lot more sense. And of course, on the bottom of the Xbox right here, you guys can see the rubber base. So this way it's lifted slightly or elevated from the holes around the bottom so it can suck in the air and not be clogged with your carpet or whatever else you may be putting this console on. Come on, think McFly, think. Were you really gonna put your console on your carpet? Not a good idea. There is a special message on the bottom that says, Xbox, hello from Seattle. Nice message. We appreciate that, Microsoft the little details right there. The original Xbox controller was massive. A lot of people hated it. So many complaints, which is why they released the S controller, which is very similar to the Xbox 360 controller. Now, I did like the original controller, but the S controller was a little bit better, a little bit more ergonomic. It was more comfortable, just the overall better design. Now, the 360 controller was very similar. I don't have my original Xbox or S controller. I do own both, but they're not here. They're in a box and I haven't gotten them out of storage yet. So I'm gonna show you guys the Xbox 360 controller instead, which is the wireless one you guys can see right here. This really is one of the best controllers Microsoft has ever made. In fact, I think it's just as good as the Xbox One controller because I really wasn't a fan of the first Xbox One controller. I just wasn't, it was kind of cheap. It wasn't as solid feeling as the Xbox 360 controller. Later on, they got better. However, the shiny bumpers on the top would get all scratchy and because it was black, it would look dirty and wore out. It just wasn't the greatest. But here is my Xbox One controller. You guys can see it looks fantastic. I think the triggers were a lot better than the PlayStation 4. I really do. like. They're silent, they're not clicky like PlayStation or flimsy feeling, like a lot better than PS4 in my opinion. But I don't like the bumpers because they get all scratchy. You just can't notice the scratches and the wear on this controller as you would on a black controller, especially shiny black on the triggers and bumpers. Looks terrible on an Xbox controller. Like if you've ever seen an Xbox One controller that's had a lot of use, it looks scratched up, beat up, and pretty crappy. That's what happens when you have shiny black plastic that gets all scratched up. I know that's not really a big deal, but it does look pretty crappy. The Xbox Series X is by far the best Microsoft controller ever made. Now, you guys can't tell by looking at it, but the grip in the back feels a lot better, specifically for sweaty-handed people. Uh, they're gonna feel a lot more grip in the back while they're sweating profusely while playing their intense MMO or intense games that require a lot of precision and a lot of concentration. You got sweaty hands? This controller is gonna be better. And the triggers and bumpers are not shiny. They're textured. They're not smooth and shiny. They are textured. Thank you, Microsoft, a lot better. The D-pad doesn't feel as clicky and flimsy. It is definitely a better D-pad. It also has a pretty big concave center so your thumb can rest comfortably in there. It's so much better than the original Xbox One controller. The graphics look fantastic on Xbox Series X. Gears 5 is really the best game right now on the Series X as far as graphics. It's kind of right there beside Valhalla. However, Gears 5 is 60p stable, whereas 
Valhalla is 30. The only time you get 60p is when you put it down into quad HD or 1080p. But overall, the Series X is very powerful. Overall, very impressed with the Series X. The controller is great. The menus are great. Share buttons, easy controller feels good. It's got some heft to it. It does not feel cheap. Not saying the other Xbox controllers felt cheap, but the Series X is the best controller Microsoft have ever put out period. The console's the perfect size. It cools very well. Overall, the design of the console and the cooling is very efficient. Graphics are good. The menus are pretty much what you're used to with Xbox. Overall, a great console. Be sure to stay tuned, guys. I'm going to be throwing Xbox One against the Series X with Halo and a bunch of other games to show you guys exactly what it looks like compared to the first gen Xbox One. I'm going to show you guys a comparison of some of the current games out right now and how good the Series X truly is and how much of a leap it is from the one teraflop Xbox One to the 12 plus teraflop Xbox Series X. I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for stopping in and watching. I'd appreciate if you guys subscribe, tap that bell notification, punch the like button. Be safe out there in these strange times and I will see all of you on the next upload guys. Peace.